morning, HD Professor A.K. Chaturvedi, sir, my seminar, Dr. Rukha, Dr. Sir, seminar coordinator, DP Shanta, sir, faculty members, examiners, and my batch meeting. I am Ishaan Tanima, pursuing my B.T.E.C. from University Department of Mechanical Engineering, Rajasthan Technical University, Fort Knox, Rajasthan. Today, I am here to present my seminar topic to everyone. To everyone, which is sensitronic brake control. Next slide. Here are the contents that this presentation covers. What is sensitronic brake control? History of SVC. Why is sensitronic brake control? SVC components, features of SVC, electronic sensor used in SVC, demerits of SVC, and conclusion and a question answer session. Next slide. So, what exactly is sensoric brake control or SVC for your? It is basically an innovative electronically controlled brake system that is fast and precise, more so than the conventional brake system because it really falls under the category of what we call brake by wireless. In SVC, the hydraulic brake cylinders and brake pedal are connected. Electronically with a servo mechanism which includes basically a pressure sensor that sends signals to motors that actuate the hydraulic cylinders. The branch of engineering used to make this concept and idea practical is called mechatronics, which is the complete interaction of mechanics and electronics. Moving on. Now, a little history of the system. The SPC system was developed by Tabler, Otto Group, and Robert Bosch, GmbH, possibly known as Bosch. It was introduced on the Mercedes Benz R230 SL class, which, will, uh, which went on sale in Europe in October 2001. Bosch has also played a role in many innovations that include the first electronic control and brake system or ABS as known in 1978, the traction control system or TCS in 1987, and the mass production of the electronic, electronic stability program or ESP in 1980. The company has also helped Mercedes Benz develop the most technologically advanced system in production, the electro hydraulic brake system, EHB, also known as sensor brake control. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, question arises why SVC? It provides a significant number of advantages for conventional braking. Let's take the scenario of something uh, of one, let's, let's take the scenario of corner ring as, for example. As you can see in the figure, even with ESP, the effect of application of Different pressure pulses on each wheel or on the outer wheels takes place after a delay where ESP takes over. There is a chance of skidding in the early moments of turning. Now with the car with SBC, this individual pressure application starts just as the brakes are applied because SBC sends more pressure directly to the outer wheels, hence leading to a very stable corner experience. Next slide. Let's take a look at some of the components of SVC. First of all, a microcomputer that calculates the brake force, braking force on each wheel individually. Second, a high pressure accumulator. It contains brake fluid that flows through the system. Third, the hydraulic brake unit. It meters the brake pressure according to requirements and possibly to the brakes. And fourth, wheel speed sensor, which generates signals that are representative of the wheel speed. Moving on to the next slide. Here is a figure depicting various components of SVC and their respective positions in the vehicle. Moving on to the next slide. Now, let's talk about the features of SVC offers to drivers. In situation of an emergency braking, it recognizes the driver's rapid movement from the accelerator onto the brake pedal and starts applying pressure on brakes even before the driver hits the brakes. For stability, it stops the car turning aside suddenly. It also provides comfort and particularly due to sharp acceleration or when the ABS is operational. When braking around corners, SVC offers the possibility of assigning individual brake forces in a, in a way that's appropriate to the situation. Moving on to the next slide. Here are the various electronic sensors that are used in SVC. All of these are self-explanatory uh, brake travel sensors situated at brake pedal, steering angle sensor situated at steering wheel, Wheel speed sensor situated at a D. Hydraulic unit sensor situated at front wheel. Moving on. Here is a list of demerits of SBC which are also responsible for the failure and shutdown of the system. First is the cost. One replacement of SBC can cost hundreds to thousands of pounds. In 2018, Mercedes even increased warranty for the repair and replacement of the system in USA from 10 years to 25 years. D-class cars 
were recalled by Mercedes Benz twice because of the faulty wiring and software issue. This cost the company around 170 million dollars. The assembly is more complex because of the presence of so many electronic parts. The system has been proven very, very difficult on the maintenance side because it's prone to environmental conditions. Next slide. So, what's the conclusion here? Well, the system did fail because of the limited technology of the early 2000s, but it did, it did lead to the innovation of more efficient brake by wire systems that are common these days in hybrid cars such as Toyota Prius. The introduction of LVC enabled a healthy competition in the automobile industry. While other companies learned about the do's and don'ts of electro hydraulic brake system. This is to provide strong software and wire foundation while keeping maintenance and maintenance cost minimal. Uh, any questions? Yes. What are some of other features of SBC? Uh, other features include drive rate, soft top, traffic assist, and driver feature. Uh, any other question? Yes. What other cars use brake by wire system? Uh, other cars include Corvette C8, uh, Alfa Romeo Giulia, and Lexus i400h. Any other questions? No. Thank you.